This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. On this installment of Discover the Upper Cumberland, we visit the Sergio Brothers to see what they're brewing in Wye County. Next, we get behind the scenes at the Governor's School hosted at Tennessee Tech University each summer. And then we see what makes the Smithville Fiddler Chambry such a special destination in DeKalb County. Stay tuned for Discover the Upper Cumberland on WCTE, your Upper Cumberland PBS. Funding for this program was provided in part by the United States Department of Agriculture. Welcome to Discover the Upper Cumberland, the series, where we explore our region of Tennessee. I'm your guide, Desiree Duncan. Calf Killer Brewing Company is the Upper Cumberland's first craft beer brewed from the Calf Killer River of White County. Brothers Don and Dave Sergio are the masterminds behind what started as a home brewing hobby out of their love of beer to the full brewing company whose beers can be found on taps across the state. Not to mention they give one heck of a tour at their brewery. Producer Rick Wells takes us to where the magic happens at Calf Killer Brewing. We started Calf Killer Brewing Company in uh, 2010, and uh, since then we have grown in size and stature to encompass many places in the, uh, in the state. We started with only five accounts that had carried our uh, keg beer on tap, and now we have, what is it Dave? With, uh, close to probably 100 accounts throughout the state, uh, mostly from middle to east Tennessee. The name Calf Killer actually comes from the river. The, uh, the Calf Killer River runs right through Sparta, and uh, it actually is the source of our water here at the, uh, at the brewery. So it's, uh, it's actually a very good water source. Uh, the brewery is becoming quite a tourist destination. It's kind of fun. Almost every Saturday we'll give tours, and uh, we'll give at least two or three tours every Saturday, and we have anywhere from 60 to 80 people on uh, any given weekend and it's uh, it's pretty fun. We have a lot of people coming in from all over the country. Uh, a lot of them from Tennessee, but uh, there's it's amazing how many people have actually heard of our little place and love to tour and do the thing at breweries and we uh, we have a fun tour. I'm really proud of it. You know, it's kind of fun because we uh, we get to go out and do these little uh, these little you know beer festivals. Or we get to do events throughout the state, and so the neat thing is, is the people that we meet at these events at some point end up coming back to the brewery or telling their friends or or if they have family in town or family in the state somewhere, they'll just actually come by and they'll they'll give us a shout and they'll come by and take a tour and kind of see. And uh, that's been one of the neat things about it is actually getting out and just meeting people and then showing them what we do here and actually uh, showing them that you know Sparta has uh, a lot to offer. Uh, including a nice little brewery. There, there are a myriad of reasons to visit Calf Killer Brewing Company. Uh, one, I, I think that, uh, and the best one is because we have great beer. And uh, sometimes there, there's beer on the tours that you won't ever get anywhere else but here. So that's a, that's a really cool thing that we have. Uh, also, it's very informative. Uh, if you were interested uh, in the, how we came to be and uh, the many years of struggle leading up to uh, what we now have, it's, uh, we tell that story, and also, if you are an aspiring home brewer, you pretty much could learn how to make beer from here. Uh, if you paid attention during our production side, uh, you, you pretty much could make beer. That's, that's what I think. I think that's why you ought to come, that people ought to come. Why do you think, David? I think it's just it's a, it's a great way to spend the afternoon. Uh, I think it's something, it's, a, it's something fun. It's something that you don't find in a whole lot of places, and I think it's, you know, um, as you look around the area, it's like this is, you know, it's, it's a great little place to be. We'll find that um, a lot of the people who, uh, they'll set up a tour the same day that they're going hiking at Fall Creek Falls, or they're going to Burgess Falls, or to Cummings Falls, and, you know, people that are out doing things, you know, a lot of outdoors things, or they'll come in to go, you know, to see the square in Sparta, or just, you know, they're driving through, or uh, things like that, and so it's neat to kind of, to be a part of somebody's, you know, day plan, which is cool. So the future of Calf Killer Brewing Company is really interesting. Dave and I don't uh, believe that we want to make a whole bunch of beer. We don't want to uh, compete with everyone else on volume, but we do want to diversify and actually be able to make a decent living at some point, because up until now, we're just we're fighting. So, but either way, our, our plan to diversify and uh, have just basically grow the culture of Calf Killer is uh, essentially to make, get a bigger brewery, uh, a little bit bigger, uh, enough to where we can still 
man manage it ourselves. And then we want to also have a restaurant and we also want to uh, be on the Kafkila River to where we can have canoe and kayak launches and uh, maybe we can have a little pavilion in town to where we can send the kayak down and then go pick them up. Maybe they'll, they'll spend some time at the pavilion drinking some beer, eating some local cheese or local deer meat, sausage, deer sausage, things of that nature. The uh, Kafkila bus will roll in, grab the people, bring them back to the, uh, our eatery. Uh, in the meantime, Dave and I will be making beer, waiting tables, uh, cooking breakfast on Sundays. Living the dream. You know. Fun stuff. Our gift shop is open um, Monday through Friday, 10 to 4. Uh, and then if you'd like to, like to come take a tour, we do tours by appointment. And you can, be, uh, you can reach us at 739-BEER, or you can get us at uh, www.calfkillerbeer.com. I'm here with Melinda Kiefer from City of Cookville, and we've got some exciting news about what's going on in the Cookville area. Welcome. Thank you so much, Desiree. I'm so proud to be here. Um, there is a lot of exciting things happening in the Upper Cumberland and in Putnam County, City of Cookville specifically. But in this particular episode, we're going to talk about the fifth interchange. Uh, I know some folks in the community have heard about there's going to be a new exit off of 40 to get to Cookville, but can you just kind of give a, an explanation of what this is and what this means for our region? Absolutely. I'd love to. Um, the fifth interchange, as it's called, and I'm pretty sure they dubbed it that because it will be the fifth exit for um, City of Cookville within the city limits. Um, the interchange has actually been on the long range plans for a long time, um, and 10 or 12 years, if you will, and finally came to fruition when we purchased property to develop the Highlands Business Park. And so as time goes on, working with Tennessee Department of Transportation and with the Federal Highway Administration, um, that project is finally coming to fruition. Um, it is exciting. Um, it will create a whole new area of development there around that interchange. We know that. And actually was a huge catalyst for Academy Sports and Outdoors locating where they did in the western portion of our county because of the transportation access. So it, it is a, um, a, a game changer, if you will, for our entire community. I know with the business park, that's bringing new industry into the area, so the help with uh, workforce development, getting folks moving here. Uh, talk a little bit about that and then maybe uh, about what is the possibility in the long run. We've been very successful in the last 18 to 24 months. Um, we're, we're, we were able to be successful because our leadership in our community, our elected leadership, and our citizens um, spent the time and money preparing us for economic growth. Um, you know, we've, it's been a tough few years with the economic recession, and we did the right things at the right time to be poised to come out into a growth time um, now with Academy Sports and Outdoors announcing um, 700 jobs. And as recently as just a few weeks ago, FICOSA International announced 900 jobs in our community. So while we've been working on infrastructure, other components in our community have really been working on focusing on that workforce development, whether it's through state programs like the Drive to 55, or whether it's through specific mentoring programs that we have at our Chamber of Commerce. All of these things create a foundation for our future economic growth. Um, the city of Cookville will be building um, Bennett Road Extension, which will connect that new interchange to Highway 70. And so have you driven out in Highway 70 going west in a while? You can see that this um, connector road should provide some new um, interest, if you will, um, to that corridor, um, which has historically served us well before I-40. The connector road is required as part of the interchange. It is policy that when um, the Federal Highway Administration builds a new interchange that the local community provide connectivity. So we're learning a lot about our federal highway system and why policies are written like they are. So we connect to another state highway. Uh, and also I know that this is a, a, a loftier long down the road uh, goal, but you know, Cookville serves as a hub for the region. You know, folks come in, they either commute for work here or they do their shopping, their grocery shopping, all of that stuff, they come into Cookville. So there's a possibility of expanding for more of that. 
Absolutely. Um, historically, we've always been the hub. Um, we've we've been the transportation center, the education center, um, the health care center, if you will, for the whole region. And so I think we obviously will continue to play that role. Um, we're at a point now, I think, where by by building the foundation of our infrastructure, we can begin to upgrade the goods and services that are provided to the citizens, locally and regionally. Um, we know our role in the region and we want it to support every single county, city, citizen in the entire region. Uh, we, we want to be there um, for those jobs, for that education, uh, and for those shopping experiences, entertainment, sports. Um, so yeah, I think our future is very bright and um, these road projects are critical to our long-term economic health. Thank you so much for taking the time out to join us and give Thanks, us this Desiree, update. Desiree, as always. <laughs> All right, stay tuned for more on Discover the Upper Cumberland. Each summer, Tennessee Tech University opens its campus to students from across the state for the Governor's School for Business and IT Leadership. Selected students are invited to participate in an entrepreneurship course taught on campus while living in the dorms and getting a taste of college life. Producer Craig Gray shows us an inside look at TTU's Governor's School. Governor School for Business and Information Technology Leadership is a month-long program. They're here for 28 days. The scholars, as we call them, come here to Tennessee Tech University as fully admitted students. They take three classes a day. They're earning three hours of college credit while they're here. They're also here to develop themselves professionally and personally. I told them at the very beginning of the program that they were not going to be the same person that they were 28 days from now. I wanted to go into nursing and I thought this would be good to get the business aspect of it and maybe I could learn to be like administrator or learn how to do a business plan, right? being accounted, you know, all the basics of uh, being a higher business position. For me, I hope to achieve a basic aspect of learning and understanding the concept of business itself. I came personally for the IT and leadership aspect, but understanding business is critical in today's world. From me being the first contact with them as far as their applications, I review their applications and I, you know, I get a good glimpse of them first. As I've got to know them over just the last three weeks, it, they're, they're exactly what they were in their applications. Some have, have really lived up to all their expectations and some have even gotten gotten greater since they've been here, or more open since they've been here. It's really great to see just how diverse some of the students that come in are and just how much motivation they have and how much passion they have for their future, not only just for theirs, but also for their community. I had about 126 applicants this year. I can only bring 30 of them. I want to bring everybody. Um, but it's, you know, it's my job, along with uh, my assistant and several other people, to evaluate those applications and determine who's going to be a good fit for the program. To make myself stand out, I stated specifically in the essays that I wanted to be here. I wanted to learn. I wanted to gain a further understanding of business, of IT, of leadership. I wanted to know exactly how all of those worked, even though I, I know now that I only know the basics of each. I wanted to be here. I told why I wanted to be here. Um, I am willing to learn. I really didn't know much about business or the IT part. So I was like, maybe I can learn IT and business and take it out to my community and like I said I'm willing to learn. I will go above and beyond, stay up late nights with my group and we'll have pros and cons discussions like about ourselves but I, I was ready for this. Something that is very significant for these scholars to learn is that they can make a difference and you don't necessarily have to have the tools to do it. It's all about perseverance and knowing that you can and knowing that you have people there to help you and to guide you. I personally think that 
By them going through this program, not only are they developing themselves academically and professionally, but they're developing themselves personally. And that's an absolutely amazing thing to see. And I can tell you, we've got 29 people in the program right now, and I watch every single one of them, and they have all surpassed any expectation that I ever possibly had for them. I think I can make something in my community, start a program for uh, the less fortunate, for um, orphans, you know, something that I can take back to my community. By knowing business, I can understand, and by knowing leadership, I can lead in that administrative position, and by knowing IT, I know how to work all the technology that I'll need to in today's world. Something I would love to see happen for the scholars that come out of this program is that they continue to spread awareness for this type of program, to spread awareness for this form of education, and maybe it will spread to public schools across the state and maybe even across the country. Really, ultimately, I hope these scholars walk away with something that can change their community and can change the future. And we're here with Wes Hewen from the Tennessee Department of Transportation. Thank you for joining us, Wes. You're welcome, Desiree. As we were talking to Melinda earlier about the fifth interchange, the new exit off of 40 leading into Cookville, uh, I kind of wanted to get some background information from you about how this is all going to work. I know you're on a timeline, and for folks to not expect us to just pop up and be ready by fall, uh, just kind of give us a little bit of background on what it takes. Well, there's a lot of history with the project. We started in early 2000 with a planning document. Uh, interchange justification study and so it's the life of the project has lasted since early 2000 and then after the planning document we, we worked on environmental document and completed that in 2008 and then we've got preliminary plans, right of way plans, uh, construction plans so right now we're in the phase of acquiring right of way and, and Desiree, it's five projects all tied together. It's a state industrial access project for Mondley Creek and a state industrial access project for Bennett Road. Then there's two what we call LICs, local interstate connectors, that tie from the new interchange to US 70 to the north, and they're all tied into the interchange project. So. It's a lot of moving parts, and they can only move as fast as the slowest project. So it's really complicated, and, and that's, what, that's what we're working on. Uh, so explain to folks exactly where this interchange, new exit, uh, will be along 40. I believe the, the existing bridge over the interstate is called Mine Leak Creek, and the interchange is going to be right there. We're going to tear the old bridge down and build a new six lane wide bridge, it's two lanes in each direction with a, a median that's going to have two left turn lanes on the north end and two on the south end, a full diamond inter interchange. Oh, wow. And then it goes down and ties into the new Highlands Business Development Park. And so then it, it goes past Stewart Road uh, and then it would go north and tie into LICs to go all the way to 70. So for those that are not exactly familiar with the name of that bridge, it's the first, uh, once it's completed, it'll be the first exit you'll get to when you're coming from Nashville. Yes, it will, in, in the greater Cookville area. Yeah. Right now, as it stands, there's the exit for Willow, Jefferson, 70, and 111. Yes. So this is pretty, pretty exciting stuff. It is. It, it's uh, a lot of opportunity for employment, for Putnam County and surrounding counties, so it's uh, part of economic development. The state does all we can. We have more requests for projects than we have money. So the problem now is it's funding for potential projects. So, But this one, the funding's there. But we just got to get it finished and let. And so on a grander scale, something like this doesn't just happen every day. A region does not get a new exit on the interstate. This is no. kind of a big deal. Yes, it is. It's, it's, it's big for Putnam County, for Cookville. Uh, we have to work with federal highways, and, and we're using federal dollars. Right now, we have more projects than we have money for, so the, the fuel tax is collected. It goes to Nashville. Tennessee gets back less than it goes up there. Some states are called receiver states, but we're donor states. So 
now we have a backlog of projects. So to have this project accelerating in a time when funding is uncertain is really big for Cookville. Well, we're very grateful to have yeah. it. Because this is going to be a huge economic uh, opportunity to our region. Yes, it sure is. So thank you again, Wes, for joining us. And stay tuned for more on Discover the Upper Cumberland. The Old Time Smithville Fiddler's Jamboree and Crafts Festival is a DeKalb County tradition that draws musicians, craft artists, and spectators to the Smithville Square each summer around the Independence Day weekend. The original idea for the Country Music Festival came from Congressman Joe L. Evans, and soon after the festival became a broader tribute to Appalachian art and culture when crafts and the National Championship for Country Musician Beginners was added to the roster of the event. Producer Daniel Duarte shares the tradition of the Smithville Fiddler's Jamboree. Hit it, boys! Hi, my name is Jack Barton. I'm the president and coordinator of the Jamboree, the Smithville Fiddler's Jamboree and Crafts Festival. Uh, this is our 44th year. It's got a long history of uh, bringing the traditional Appalachian music to, uh, to life for people. Uh, it started out as a festival that the, uh, Congressman Joel Evans wanted to start. He, he was very proud of Smithville. Began, began more as a way to uh, showcase Smithville and uh, showcase the 4th of July and the patriotism. It evolved into this sort of festival with the bluegrass music and uh, at one point there was many of us out there but uh, we're kind of the grandfather of all, all of these shows and we're kind of almost the last one standing that just truly lets amateurs come out and shine and show off uh, oftentimes what's professional quality but, but people from everyday walks of life that get up there and dance and, and entertain us. Yeah, hi, my name is Greg Shelton. Uh, I'm from Cookville, Tennessee, and we have been, I have been coming here for, it's my seventh year. Uh, I really enjoy the music, of course, uh, and all the guys picking under the shade trees and everything, and enjoy some really good food, too. Fiddler's Jamboree, and I'm, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and I play fiddle, mandolin, guitar, and while I was here yesterday, this a guy named Rob Piercy taught me how to play dobro, so I also entered that, and I won everything I entered, so thank you. Hello, I'm Rob Piercy. Uh, I'm from over in Rutherford County and I come over here to the Jamboree every year for about the last 35 years and uh, I've been a music teacher in, in Metro and a teacher at the Vanderbilt University and I've uh, taught a bunch of kids and I uh, come here and I play guitar and back up a lot of these beginners and uh, I've competed in a lot of events myself. I've probably won more contests here than anybody that I know over the years but that's because I enter everything and I'm persistent and uh, but this is a great great thing they have here in the Upper Cumberland region is this uh, Jamboree and I actually came to, it was the ninth one, was the first one I came to and now I don't know, we're in the 40s now, 
So it's something we look forward to every year. We come up here and have a big time and just uh, meet all these talented young people and get to share a little bit of our musical knowledge with them. And uh, that's kind of how I did it. I started just my first festival I ever came to was here and I learned uh, a lot of the old time music from the old timers. And now I am one of the old timers. So there we go. We'd love to see the Upper Cumberland through your eyes. So tag us in your Instagram pics with hashtag DiscoverUC, and you just might see your shot on our next episode. For more info on this show and to catch your favorite segments, visit our website, wcte.org discover. Also, if you have any topic ideas, email them to discover at wcte.org. We leave you with this performance from the Smithville Fiddler's Jamboree. Thanks for joining us and remember to get out there and discover the Upper Cumberland. Funding for this program was provided in part by the United States Department of Agriculture. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.